Now let's look into how you select a Six Sigma project. Because what's important is in Six Sigma project, the project should be able to bring you some kind of monetary value. Because you're going to put a lot of team members doing a lot of analysis in Six Sigma projects and then finding a solution which should be a sustainable. So it's very important to you know, go through that procedure of finding the best Six Sigma project. So let's uh, look into that. Let's say uh, the project selection. So how do you do a uh, Six Sigma? That's a symbol of Sigma. So how do you select a Six Sigma project? There are a couple of ways. One of the uh, way is very common and it's called uh, blatantly obvious. It's called blatantly obvious. So as the name suggests, Definitely obvious means what? Something which is very obvious, obvious to everyone in the organization. Top to bottom, everyone knows that that particular problem is there with us. Whenever we do a particular type of uh, uh, assignment or task or activity, we always find it difficult. If you talk, if you want to see an example in the IT industry, it could be like uh, some technology like .NET or Java or some other application which is always a troublesome for that particular team. Or if you look into uh, some construction example, it could be like uh, uh, whenever we do an RCC is always leaking. <laughs> could be possible. Or whenever we do a tiling, it's not always proper. Uh, it's proper or maybe leveled like you have seen in other places. Some issues are always coming there. Or maybe it's uh, the plaster is coming out. Some issue which is always there, which everyone knows about it. And that is uh, something called blatantly obvious, something which is very obvious, very common. Everyone knows about it. Now, uh, another, uh, another way, if you, if you don't have any very obvious uh, problem with it, within your organization which you want to sort it out, what you can do? There's nothing like that. What you can do to find or select a six year project? What is the next thing you can do? Obviously, you can do a brainstorming, right? So that is called brainstorming approach. That's called brainstorming approach. In brainstorming approach, you know, you bring uh, people from uh, all the department and try to find out what is the best project, the six Sigma project, you can work on it and uh, try to solve that uh, problem, whatever it is, whether it's uh, trying to reduce the cost, trying to reduce the time to produce that product or service, make it faster, or you have a particular problem, right? You have a particular defect coming up, so much of the same defect coming up. So you want to reduce that number of defects. That also you can look into. If you are looking at a transaction example, for example, there are a complaint, customer complaint coming up, especially from one reason. That one reason you want to show sort it up. That's what you can do by doing a brainstorming session. And there are multiple ways of doing a brainstorm. For example, uh, uh, something is called a round robin. Like you want to give chance to everyone, every single person in uh, the audience, you want to give the chance. You can go by round robin so that everyone gets a chance. You can also look into nominal group technique, which we will look into right after this. Okay, these are the two uh, approaches 
for six sigma project selection. One is like very common, very obvious one. The second one is doing a brainstorming with your team members. Suppose uh, you don't have a specific problem, which is very common, and you by brainstorming also you're not able to get into a specific uh, uh, problem which you want to work on. What could be third approach? Yeah, exactly. Third could be a systematic approach, which we call it the structure approach. Structure approach. Structure approach. What is structure approach? You find the most important uh, uh, issue which you can select as Six Sigma project to solve it by using data, historical data, the data within the organization. You collect the data and the, with the data you prove that okay this is the issue which is the biggest one and which is contributing to the biggest uh, you know loss of revenue, loss of time within the organization and you want to work on that just because of this and if we solve this one issue we can save a lot of time and money and resources of course so this is a structure of which is uh, I believe would be more appropriate and more systematic and more structured and more uh, what do you call it? appropriate for six sigma projects Though you can always work on this, which is very common, like you feel that okay, this problem is there, we want to sort it out, then you can obviously work on it, no issues. And uh, you know, if you have great minds and uh, you can get uh, to that uh, specific thing, which uh, people remember that okay, this happened last time and this is happening for so many times, repeatedly this problem is coming up, then also you can work on that, uh, uh, pro that uh, issue as a six month project which you get it from uh, brainstorming and we discussed that uh, there are a couple of uh, different way of doing brainstorming you can select any one of that use it and finally nothing is there nothing is working you know this can come like one or two times but uh, when you feel that your organization is almost uh, okay kind of organization not a big problems uh, within the organization problem within the product or service anything then Obviously, you may have to go for a structured approach to find the biggest, current, biggest bottleneck. Because every organization, there would be some kind of bottleneck. And this, that bottleneck you can find only with structured approach. Right? So these are uh, some of the ways you can select a six-month project. Okay, let's move on to the next one.